Hey there, I wanted to work a little bit on another optimization problem. I know we've done optimization in the past, but it was in a little more of an abstract way where we were optimizing uh, to find like uh, linear regression, best best uh, best fit curves, some more complicated types of curve fitting. Uh, what else did we do? I think we optimized a, uh, a projectile to find an optimal angle to fire a projectile at to maximize the distance, um, things like that. And since people um, seem to be interested more in the financial stuff, I thought we'd do like a, a toy, toy portfolio optimization problem uh, using Python and SciPy's optimized package. This isn't an answer to a specific question per se, but it's a kind of a, an amalgamation of a couple questions and comments over a, a couple of different videos. So what we're going to do is take uh, the stocks we used in our correlation video, um, there were like five of them, and we're going to use historical data and kind of uh, come up with an optimal weighting for a portfolio based on a couple of criteria. Uh, one of those is pretty trivial. We're just going to find the maximum returns when you don't obviously need a computer for that. You just look at which was the best performing stock and you put 100% of your money in that. Um, but we're going to use that as like a test case just to get to get the code kind of working. And then we will use like a, a sharp ratio or a modified sharp ratio. I think I'm going to just for the sake of convenience, ignore the risk-free rate so that the sharp ratio is effectively the um, the mean of the daily returns divided by the standard deviation of daily returns. So we'll use that and kind of get like a, um, a weighting that kind of takes uh, volatility into account and kind of tries to minimize volatility while maximizing returns. So um, yeah, let's, um, let's just uh, jump into a notebook and get started. Okay, notebook. Um, we're just going to be using our standard uh, import here. We're going to use for the optimization the SciPy optimize and the uh, the minimize function. So let's just pull all these in, and now let's load in our raw stock data. So the data we're going to be using is the same uh, same set we used for our uh, stock market correlation video a couple weeks ago. Uh, I just didn't want to download a whole set of new things. And we'll truncate it somewhat to maybe uh, calendar year 2019, just to be, uh, just to uh, to annualize this. Um, so let's just look at what this data looks like. So print SPY. Uh, so what? Uh, we have a bunch of columns here. We have the date, you know, closing, uh, the date of the date of the transaction, date of the record. Uh, open price, high price, low uh, close, and adjusted close. Uh, the adjusted close, if you don't know, is, is basically adjusted for splits. I mean, there are no splits in the spy that I'm aware of, but uh, potential stock splits and, and dividends and things like that. So we, we're going to be making use of the adjusted close. Um, when Pandas pulled in this date column, it was this, these are essentially uh, text, ASCII, uh, ASCII text. So let's convert them to date time objects and then move forward from there. So we get rid of that, uh, change these to date time, it seems to run okay. Um, and for the sake of convenience, excuse me, it's a uh, wildfire season here in Southern California and I'm not sure how much air is in the room. I think it's more smoke than air, so I'm kind of coughing every five seconds here. Um, so let's, uh, for the sake of convenience, we will make the index of these tables the, the date column. So uh, we do that with the set index command. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let's just make sure all this runs. Yes, it does. And I want to rename. I want to build one single data frame with each, um, where the adjusted close column from each of these these frames is uh, has a title of whatever underlying stock it was. So what I'm going to do is go through. <coughs> oh, man, it's hard to breathe. Um, and rename the adjusted close for each of these, just like uh, like adjusted close of SPY will be called SPY, uh, for GLD it'll be called GLD, and so so on. So here we are with the column renames. Let's just make sure this cell runs. Yes, it does. Now let's build our our master data frame here. Alrighty, so I just created a date range here based on the dates of interest. I created a data frame and then just populated it with the uh, appropriate columns. And I used the, the join command uh, to do that. You could do it manually, but I just decided to use the join command here. Okay, that works. Let's just print this out. Let's just print uh, print head, print df.head. Yeah, so that's what we were looking for here. Spy, gold, uh, apple, 
FXB, which is the British pound, and TLT, which are bonds. And these are the adjusted uh, closing prices of each of those underlines at this given, given date. So let's get rid of this line here, and let's just visualize this by doing a df.plot. Okay, uh, so we can see a couple of these things are pretty flat throughout the year, and we have two that look kind of like they're going, well, they're definitely going up, but the uh, scales are different. So what I'm going to do is actually normalize these all to, um, to start at the same price. So what we're going to do is come up here, and we'll go df is equal to df divided by uh, the first row. So df dot I look zero. Yay, there we go. So we all, um, everything starts at one now and goes until wherever it goes. And essentially one minus, this is the percent change. So like this guy here, Apple, was up um, 1.8 minus one, which is 0.8, about 80 something percent, which is really damn good actually. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the absurdly trivial here and do the total portfolio returns. And obviously if we're doing some sort of allocation to each of these stocks, the ones that will, you don't need a computer to tell you this, uh, what you do is you just pick the one that gave, had the highest returns, uh, put 100% 100, 100 of your money there, and zero here. But let's just use this as a sanity check to make sure our kind of, our kind, our code, uh, code base kind of works. Uh, we set up our optimization uh, function correctly and um, things like uh, our constraint uh, functions and whatnot. So let's just do that even though it is kind of a bit silly. And I'm just going to go through this kind of fast because this is obviously pretty uh, easy. So port, I want to create a function called portfolio. Oh man, it would be easy if I could spell portfolio returns. It's going to take our um, arguments. Um, we're going to call it, uh, what should we call it? Our allocation vector. Allo let's just call it um, alloc for allocation. And then we're also going to need to pass in our data frame. So let's just call it uh, data. Okay. The first thing we have to do is distribute through that allocation. So uh, our data frame is just going to be equal to data times alloc. So now we need to calculate our portfolio value. So let's just call it value, and that is going to be equal to data. We're just going to sum over our data frame, uh, sum over each each row. So axis is equal to one, and now value. We care about the ending value, so the value is going to be equal to uh, the last entry in that data frame. So value is equal to value minus one, and now we return and now the one trick here is we're going to be using a minimization function we actually want to m find a maximum so what we're going to do is just negate what this function is uh, putting out so we're going to return minus value so the negative of a minimum is a maximum and that's basically what we're doing so that looks good let's just see if it takes it without typos nothing majorly obvious uh, let's continue to set things up here so we're also going to need some sort of constraint that keeps these allocations uh, to uh, numbers that make sense. The sum of all your allocations, sum of all the percentages has to equal 100%, assuming you're using all your, all your money. Um, so let's create a constraint function. So, and you could use lambdas for this too, but I'm just going to uh, do a, a function. Constraint, it takes one argument x. Well, let's just keep the notation uh, consistent. So allocation uh, and the way this function works is uh, we're going to use an equality constraint so we not want to find the sum of all these the sum of all these allocations has to equal one so our function needs to return something that essentially equals zero it's almost like a root finding function so what we need to do is do an np dot sum allocation and that uh, minus one should equal zero so that should be our constraint uh, function. Our final uh, thing to set are bounds on these values. Um, any given constraint can only be between zero and one. You can't. We're not. We're assuming you're not uh, not taking short positions or anything like that. So our bounds is going to be equal to a tuple uh, in each of these uh, five entries for each of these these uh, stocks. 
Now, if you're doing this in production code, you'd obviously probably loop, you know, create this via a loop or something like that. Um, but I'm just going to type it out manually. So each of these five stocks is just going to be have a tuple associated with it that's either zero or one. So I need one more, don't I? Zero comma one. Uh, okay. Now let's go to a new cell and let's create our initial guess of the allocations. Um, as we've talked about before in like the gradient descent videos, the uh, other videos where we use the scipy.optimize packages, you need to provide an initial guess. And I don't know, well, I do know in this case what the answer is, but uh, we're just going to assume everything is equally distributed. So 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Okay, now we're actually ready to call our minimize function. So, um... I don't know, let's just use a different variable here, A again for allocation, is equal to minimize. Our function is this, our portfolio return, so portfolio return. Our initial guess is um, our allocation. Bounds is equal to bounds. And our constraints, actually we did not construct our constraint dictionary. Um, when Passing in equality or inequality constraints into minimize, you need a dictionary of, of conditions. Um, so I'm going to do that in a second. But first, uh, constraints. Uh, okay, I actually stopped the recording to look this up. It's been a long time since I've uh, done this. Let us create the dictionary here. Um, we'll call that cons for constraints. Our constraint type is an equality, and our function is going to be uh, constraint so this function here and now our constraints down here is equal to cons and with any luck we are good to go and let's just print out our results so what's the issue here bounds um, bounds equals bounds bound I had it singular here bounds uh, constraints is not a keyword. Did I spell it wrong? I probably spelled it wrong. I'll just retype it. <laughs> constraints equals. Let's try now. Oh, yeah, I forgot to pass in the data frame now. Mm -hmm. Let's do it here and say our args is equal to df. There we go. So we get a true, so apparently it succeeded. Our results are here. So we have 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0. So we have 100% in whatever our third stock is, which I assume is Apple. So let's just come out here and print uh, that data frame again. So print df.head. Uh, yep, Apple, just as we thought, and zero everywhere else. So at least we know that this kind of structure works. So let's um, optimize now on on the sharp ratio. So let's come back up here and create another function called sharp ratio. And it's going to take the same arguments, allocation, and our data frame. Uh, we're going to need the same values as before. And we're, need to, we're going to need to calculate the daily return. So daily returns is equal to values. Dot, we'll use the PCT um, change function, C-H-A-N-G-E. And we're just going to export it to NumPy. Just, I don't know, just because uh, to NumPy it should be. And uh, the first element is going to be a not a number, as we talked about before. So I'm just going to do a daily returns is equal to daily returns. And just take the second element out to the end there. So now we can just uh, return. Our sharp ratio is essentially going to be the ratio of the daily returns divided by the... Uh, the mean of the daily returns divided by the standard deviation thereof. So return, and now remember we're going to need the minus sign because we're looking for a maximum. Uh, NP dot mean uh, daily, <coughs> sorry about that, returns, 
np.standard deviation daily returns. Okay. Uh, let us copy this. <clears throat> the air quality is absolutely miserable here. So, um, so now we're not doing daily return or uh, portfolio returns. We are doing sharp ratio. Okay, let's see if this runs and we have any typos in that above code. I can't concentrate because my throat burns. It looks like I spelled the values wrong. Uh, daily return values. Okay, I called it value. Well, let's call it values for plural. And come down here. To NumPy. Oh man. <clears throat> uh, this is a function. Okay, so it says true, but we're not getting any uh, change here. So something is a bit fishy. Uh, so what's going on here? Uh, I don't see anything particularly. Oh, I do. Uh, I have to distribute through that. Um, data is equal to data times our allocation. Uh, allocation. That should do it. There we go. There's our uh, distribution. It's kind of interesting. Um, what was the our layout here? So it goes Spy Gold Apple FXB TLT. Um, so it actually overweights the Spy and kind of down downgrades Apple. Kind of uh, GLD is kind of strong there too. I guess these just smooth out the uh, the volatility of, of a stock like Apple. Um, essentially no British pound and a little bit of um, bonds. Okay, uh, my throat is killing me so I was going to uh, find a way to sanity check this or, or present a way to san sanity check this to kind of get an idea if this is indeed <coughs> accurate but um, I can barely speak so I'm not going to bother recording an outro and I'm just going to call it quits for the night. So until uh, next time I will see you.